Hello everyone, today we have two goals. First of all, let's go into save the game whenever we close it so we can keep the progress. And the second one is making it look a little bit nicer, adding a custom font, making the buttons feel a little bit nicer. And let's see what else we can get in there. So first of all, what I'm going to do is to remove the base because it looks very bad. And, you know, we already have something better, which is the graphics. And let's add a new node, which is going to be a control node, a color rect. This is only a rectangle with some colors, nothing else. Uh, to make it fill the entire screen, remember we can use the layout and full rect. And now move it to the top of the tree, so it's going to be behind. Now I'm going to pick a dark color because I want to have some good contrast between what the copy, you know, the text is and the background. So let's go with something like this and maybe with shades of blue. Okay, one tip, additional tip, never use completely black or white. Like uh, if you go black, it doesn't look very natural to the eye. We're not very used to seeing those dark colors. And I think it's it looks much better if you just get just around a very, very dark gray area or a very bright area for the whites. Of course, this is not something that you have to do, but I recommend it a lot. Um, OK, so this looks a little bit better already. Now let's import some fonts. I have two downloaded. I, I got them from fonts.google.com. First one is Enriqueta, which looks kind of medieval or something like that. And the same for Sincel, which is, I feel it's like an open version of Trajan. I'm not sure, but it looks very similar. And I'm going to be using this one for titles and the other one for the rest of the text, I think. Um, here in Google Fonts, you can select any font that you want to download and whenever you have the font selected or anything you can just download and it will give you a zip file with the files that we have i already did this so i'm going to open the folder here create one new which is going to be fonts and i'm going to paste them inside there so i have all the fonts that i want let's open Godot again and we should have them here in the fonts color okay so first of all, let's make this number one of the things that was bothering me. Like if it gets very big, if you see, it is not properly aligned. So let's make it big enough. Something like this. I don't think it's going to be bigger. And then also alignment center. So whenever the number is getting smaller or bigger, it will always be on top of that button. And let's do a custom font. To do that, here we have custom font. Let's create a new dynamic font. When you do that, you have to click here in font again. And here, finally, we can load the font that we imported. In this case, since I want it to be prominent, uh, kind of like a title, I'm going to use scene cell. And let's make it bigger, something like, I don't know, 60. Mm, that's too big. So maybe 40. Yeah, that looks okay. And also an outline. I'm going to add an outline of one pixel, which is going to be dark as well. Let's do the color here in custom colors. Something like this. Yeah. And okay, it already, I think it looks better. Let's see. Let's try some numbers. Yeah, that looks so much better than the other number. Okay, let's try it out to see how it looks inside of the game. Yeah, look how ugly this button is. Let, let, we have to change that as soon as possible. Okay. Now let's continue styling this button. Okay. So whenever we have one of these buttons, we can either use a global theme, which is making a changes to all the chi all the children from that, or a custom theme just for that button. I'm gonna be doing one specifically for this one because the button that you click all the time. I want it to be different than the rest. But if you want to know more about how themes work, I uploaded a video so you can click in the corner and yeah, you're going to be seeing this tutorial. So let's go. 
to do that you can go here to the custom style the same as we did with fonts but just with style and you have different states for the button normal is the one that we're seeing hover is when you your cursor is on top of it and pressed focus disable you, you get the idea let's go ahead first with the normal one and from that we're gonna copy them and do the other ones so new style box flat this is the one that we're gonna use because we're not gonna be using any special images or anything like that so new flat and it goes to a very ugly state let's go ahead and open it first thing the background let's see i want it to be a little bit like i don't know let's see what looks nicer red maybe something that like incites you to click on it yeah maybe something like this red but also i, I will make it a bit smaller and let, let's ch change the caption um we don't have exactly the name of the unit that we're editing so since you're like a kind of like a death lord which can reanimate corpses let's say like we have soldiers or yeah make a zombie let's say zombie make a zombie okay that's gonna be our name for that we can change this later um now let's add some border maybe some border on the sides let's see three on each side what color um maybe a darker that i'm gonna mm, yeah looks better uh the radius we're gonna be doing a bit of radius so it's not that square let's see how it looks with four hmm i'm not entirely convinced but yeah whoops moved it okay it already looks better let's change the font to see if we get more inspired let's see uh custom font new dynamic font let's select it again and let's go with the regular one and we get a medium yeah mm. hmm maybe bold let's see now let's change the size yeah this is starting to look better okay doesn't look very clickable yet so maybe if we add like some yellow here or blue since is it was the color let's see something like that hmm. let's add some action okay and darker blue something like that okay well i'm not sure if this looks clickable but you get the idea you have all these properties here and you know it, it always helps let's add some shadow okay so now let's see now that we have this style we can actually save it once we save it let's create a new folder for styles and let's say main button now that we saved it we can use it for the other ones because right now we have the default so if we try the game and we use we hover you see we change the style to the Godot default st style and we want to change those as well but if i have to do it all again i have to copy all these properties and that's just a lot of time so let's load style main button so now we have it what is the issue here with this approach the, the problem here is that if we want to change for instance the color of the shadow let's say that when we hover we want to make it yellow bright something like this so you know that you're hovering it this looks terrible but you get the idea let's see mm, something like that the problem is that since i'm modifying the same main button thing is gonna change also the the regular state so what you have to do is when you're copying this and you already open it you can press here and make unique which will make a new style which is not saved and specific for hover 
now we can go back to the normal one and remove it okay so we have the normal one as we wanted it and the hover with the yellow outline let's see if it carried it through yes okay the click doesn't look that bad but okay i'm gonna keep it for now and i think is that i want the cursor to be the hand because with the mouse only it looks kind of weird so you can change that from here in the control node in mouse you have the cursor shape and we want the let's see pointing hand okay pointing hand let's see if it looks more clickable yes super clickable okay i'm happy enough with this i'm not gonna be continue making changes but we want to make changes to these buttons as well let's see we have here the auto clickers and remember that they are a separate scene so since we're modifying a separate scene let's go and open on one okay we have the scene here the button it needs to be more clickable let's use the same base that we had before or create a new one let's see uh, custom fonts first of all new font oh sorry <laughs> new dynamic font click on it font 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 <laughs> you have to click on that so many times okay let's go with enrique that regular oof this looks so bad okay now we have to move the price a little bit there we also have that zero which is the label yeah this looks ugly okay auto clicking now this number over there and for custom styles let's use the same one for normal so load styles main button but let's tune it up a bit let's make it unique so we are only modifying this version of it and inside of there i'm gonna remove so much shadow i don't really want that much like that is okay maybe making it even more subtle okay whoops and also making it a bit bigger the font also needs to be bigger so it's easier to read okay now let's move the units per second oh sorry with the container here again um you can click here so the children are not selectable it's gonna make it easier for us uh and you know what since we're gonna be using the same font for several elements here let's go ahead and save it so we can reuse it so this custom font is gonna be Enriqueta font something like that <laughs> not very creative with the name and let's apply it to this so here in custom font load Enriqueta font same with the value custom font load oh, styles and you get a phone okay and same with the price price custom font load styles and you get a font okay and the color let's make a better green that green looks kind of weird okay maybe change it to yellow which i don't know it could be like gold instead of green more like in like new games something like that so let's say like this yellow is gonna be it okay but also i want to make this this price a little bit different oh, let's see this looks very bad this zero we'll have to change this um yeah uh let's see what we can do maybe an outline or shadow yeah shadow looks better and remember don't never use that okay so this already looks better to me at least let's see how it looks when i save it let's go back to the main game okay they are definitely taking more room <laughs> so we're gonna be making room but it already looks better so since this this is the amount of things we have all right okay this is the amount of 
those that we have, right? Yeah. So instead of adding it inside there, let's make it like a here, like a number, like a thingy. And uh, for the disable, we also need to do styles and for hover as well. So let's add those. Let's see. Auto clicker. Press the mouse. We want the pointing hand. We get this. Okay. Now for the here, this label was how many we have. Let's get the same font, custom font, load the same one. Uh, the alignment is going to be center, remember, so it doesn't change position a lot. And now let's add like a new, let's see, color rect. Let's make it the same color as the background of the other one and move it behind the label and the button something like this yeah okay and now yeah it's gonna i mean i it, i don't like this solution a lot but it's gonna look better i think than what we had let's save it and see how it looks yeah let's add more room to them okay they are taking too much space so maybe we can be a little bit more creative on how we display them oof no okay so we need to be more room uh, we need more room let's make it there the units per seconds will be there and maybe making this font smaller will be a good idea if we change the size here everything will change yeah Okay, so let's change all the font. Okay, smaller units per second. Okay. Okay, maybe like this. Let's see. Over there. Okay. Now let's do the other styles for a button. Let's save this one as auto clicker button let's do the disabled version okay we load the same style and we make it unique okay so if you want to preview one particular style and in the editor you don't have it you have to set it to that node so right now let's set it to disable and we're gonna see how it looks there's like a default on the phone which is making the copy a little bit transparent i don't really like that because you have to like you don't have the control exactly to change that but it's a good standard so i guess it's okay uh, what i'm going to do is just remove color on this one and also on the outline border okay so that way they look like you cannot click them um okay this seems good enough also i want the hover style so let's set the disable and for the hover you have to kind of figure it out like i don't know a way to preview it there's probably one so if you know it leave a comment um hover load let's open the same style i click the button now make unique and the background is going to be a little bit brighter mm, like so we have here the preview at least so yeah we get that at least and maybe the shadow i also want it to be a little bit writer yeah let's see how they look uh i'm going to save this i'm going to test the project okay yeah this looks better now we have one okay nice so it doesn't look terrible but it doesn't look very nice either but you know at least we have something better there so now we have a better 
base, you already understand how you can be creating your own styles to your to your buttons. And let's go ahead and save this number. Since we don't know exactly when the player is going to close it, we're going to be doing that every second. So I'm going to be using here on main, we are going to be creating node, which is going to be a timer. This timer will be called saving timer. The properties is going to be auto start because we wanted to start uh, whenever it's existing and the wait time is going to be one second that's okay for me saving every second seems reasonable let's set this node the timeout is the signal that gets called whenever that second ends so let's connect that signal to the main node which we have on this scene and now we have this timer and here we have to do the saving code so what is exactly the thing that we want to save here we want to save the count with which is this the variable that we are editing all the time so it's here instead of starting with zero we want to start with the previous saved so first of all since we know that we're going to be saving all the count for now but in the future we're going to be saving some other stuff let's prepare a little bit for the future and let's create a new variable which is going to be data it's going to be a dictionary and inside there we're going to have our variable which will be count equal to count so right now we're creating just a variable which will contain our count this is what we're doing here now we need the file so we can start saving things so our file equal to file new this will create a file where you can save stuff so file open it's going to be our user this is the folder where you save it and now save that txt or whatever so I use txt because a lot of editors already have it so if your user wants to go inside there and modify it or you want to do it that's just easier and then for the flags you have the flag which is called file write and that should be it if you want to check on that you remember you can press ctrl and click on file and you have here all the information you need for the flags we have here write which is number two so you can use either two or write now that we have the file open we can save the information inside to do that we use file store line and we want to save our data the problem with this is that our data is just a Godot dictionary and that's not something that can be translated easily to text so what we can do is transform it to json which is very similar to what the dictionaries are but a more general purpose way of saving dictionaries you can use you usually use json files on websites on signals like that so it's a it's a good standard that way you can encode it to json and then you can decode it from json when you load it in the future and after using any file always you need to close them so that way it will release it from the memory if you don't close it the file will still be being used all the time and it, it, it can lead to a lot of problems I'm sure you already had that issue whenever you are trying to delete the file and you get the windows warning like this file is being used but you said like where so that's probably because somebody forgot to close the file in some code so this should create the file with the count inside of it and save it as a json information but we also need to every time we load the game load this information this information so let's use the ready function and here inside we're gonna be opening a file same as we did before so file new and we're going to have an extra step 
because we don't know exactly if the user is the first time that you do it or not so we're gonna check if the file exists so if file file exists and now we do the same user save.txt so this way we can check is the file actually there and if it is there we will go ahead and open it file open save.txt and sorry for flags we want to read that way it will allow us to read the file now we create the new variable which is the data remember that this variable that we created here is nowhere else so you have to create it but to load it we have to now file get line remember here we store a line we save it and here we get it but before we use that we need to get it decoded from json parse json to whatever the result is going to be so this is going to give us that information encoded here we decode it and now we have the variable data which has a variable inside of it which is count and that's the variable that we want so once we have that we set the count which is this one that we're making right now it's going to be equal to whatever it is in stored inside the data so data count that should be it let's try it out for now let's hope it works because i did a lot of things without testing so let's see we have three if i close it and i open it again it should load and it has three over there again that's great now let's see 18 we close it nothing open open it again and it's 18. okay the next thing that we're gonna have to be doing and we're gonna do that in the next tutorial is every one of these now if i have like two auto clickers here it's gonna be augmenting it but whenever i close it and we open it again we don't save that so we don't have to be saving those all those the price the how many auto clickers we have how many units per second they generate that information we have to store everything in that zip file that way we will continue doing that that's it for today i hope you were able to follow through if you have any questions or anything leave a comment below i'm really happy to answer and help you with anything you might have any question you might have i also want to really thank my patreons and i know that i haven't been uploading as much as i wanted but i'm back on track i also i'm preparing a little bit of like a green screen and i'm really on top of everything just to make the videos better and make them easily so yeah that's it for now and see you guys next time bye